you know, if, if you're an experimenter and you like yeah. to experience real world, then it, it, it's good. It's good. For, it's a bit frustrating when things start to really go bananas, like books fly off shelves and open and things like that. And that's not a that's not a pleasant place to be whatsoever. Ooh, wow! Wow! Synchronous is it? <laughs> Goodness me, James! What was that? Uh, was that young to live by? That's just fallen by, off yeah. your shelf. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Addiction is kind of a, it's more of a complicated thing. It's not necessarily a substance level addiction. It can take many different forms. Mm. Um, is there a way, and I don't want to make this too qu um, quantitative, but w what are the kind of suite of addictions one might have? You know, so we, we have the standard substance-based addictions, but we've hinted at, I don't think we've said explicitly so, so far, that there are mm. uh, more instinctual level addictions that you can have compulsions necessarily because you've hinted pauline as well that too much creativity is a bad thing immediately yes. to me that blows the entire frame around the conventional addiction just out of the water because yes. because addiction then no longer becomes a substance which you have to keep taking and taking and taking yes. it becomes something as in a part of you perhaps instinctual has control of you and, yes. and you're sort of losing yourself to it and of course yeah. we're, in, we're in a pandemic or an epidemic whatever of uh, of, of porn addiction i followed yeah. that for the last three years it's not mm. a nice thing i've spoken to hundreds and hundreds of people who've been suffering with this type type of thing perhaps we can mm. make a video on that on that stuff in the near future but if you could yes. give if you could give say, a, a suite or an overview of the different types of addictions perhaps three four five of them however many you you, you might mm. see, see see fit and to see what maybe the underlying mechanisms could be or how somebody might fall you find themselves falling into a trap mm. like that where these red shoes yes. have come and tied themselves to their own feet and they just can't stop yes. dancing yes yes well it, it's really very simply anything that's done to excess yeah so, uh, and it can be expressed in many forms. I think you've already hinted that the, the ones that people commonly know about are um, alcohol and drugs and bad relationships. So they tend to be the ones that are, are uppermost in people's minds, but it can take any form, um, such as, you know, you could have a fitness addiction, an addiction to eating junk food. Um, women sometimes become addicted to pregnancy, to becoming pregnant. Um, that whole process of, of pregnancy and what that might mean um, symbolically for them. Um, it could be overwork. It could be um, uh, being too tidy, you know, wanting to uh, almost be too organized to the point that you know, a person might have to sort of organise their workspace so much that they actually never get round to creating anything, for example. It could be being angry all the time. Um, it could be uh, an addiction to something spiritual, to power, to wanting power over other people and to abusing that power. The whole multifarious ways in which it can be expressed so it, it, it sounds to me almost like the addiction in a in an independent autonomous manner to your own ego yes. starts yes. being the thing which justifies your life in an unconscious manner and yes. and i use i use the term ju um, justify your life because recently one of my friends people on the internet won't know him he's one of my old, you mm. know one of my oldest friends from back, back home he sent yes. me a clip of jordan peterson talking about um what was it? What what happens if I'm really creative but also really neurotic or something? Someone asked him a, a question and his response was, you need to make a schedule in order to justify your life. And my friend sent this to me and my friend wasn't very happy at the time. And it actually, yeah. it almost made me cry, to be completely honest with you. Yes. Because because watch, watching my friend come and say, I need to justify my life by going OTT with a structured life. Yeah. It's like, yes. no, you no, you definitely don't need to justify yeah. your life with, with anything like that. Your, your, your life is innately valuable as such, as yes. my friend. And independent of my, my influence, you don't need that. So mm. almost like, because there's this whole suite of things, it's like, well, maybe the fact you've become addicted to having to you become addicted to having to think you have to justify your life because yes. yes. i was definitely addicted to that and that's not a that's not a pleasant place to be whatsoever yeah Ooh, wow wow synchronous is it <laughs> goodness me james what was that uh, was that young to live by that's just fallen by, off yeah. your shelf <laughs> well there you go <laughs> <laughs> the great man has spoken <laughs> Carry on, carry on. The penny has dropped, <laughs> as the old expression goes. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, if I could maybe just for a moment, I, I appreciate that, you know, you, you, you're talking about it. I'm presuming it's a male friend. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. 
open, but say from women's lives, because um, women do this kind of thing a lot. Um, it's as if they, because obviously, and, and I've said this before, we all have very busy lives. Suddenly, you know, doing the ironing or hoovering the carpet or going to answer or whatever it happens to be becomes more important than actually doing the creative work. And it's as if you tell yourself, well, you can't, I can't sit down and create until I've done A, B, C, D. And then and there goes the, the list or the structure that you might give yourself. So it, it's giving yourself permission to do it when the impulse arises. Uh, I know with Steve, uh, very often with his writing, say, for example, if he gets interrupted mid-flow, he knows that when he resumes his creativity again, it may not necessarily flow in the same way that it was intended to, had he not been interrupted. Yeah, yeah. that's an example. Of it, it is an example uh, yeah. of it, yeah. Particularly because it's, uh, I'm a method writer, so I have to be in uh, a particular state uh, to write, uh, and I don't know what's going to happen. I, don't, I never plan, I never plan at all. I, I just let them write themselves, mm. whether that's a, a novel or a screenplay. Mm. Uh, um, the result once you've been interrupted will never be the same as it would have been otherwise because that state has been broken yes i think the creative process itself can have a structure um again to get another example i know with with steve he likes to create the cover mm. before he actually starts to write so he, ha he has the cover worked out in his mind mm, that's very um, if, if i was drawing or painting i would have some structure in place to then allow my, my creativity to come through and to be put into that structure. But the, for, for us, I would say the structure relates to the creative process rather than other things that um, would really just be a distraction away from it. I, I don't know if that helps to sort of answer your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, there is that idea of, of um, needing some kind of structure. It was in that particular yeah. example, which you know, the ghost of Carl Jung seems to have, re have responded, I don't know, positively or negatively to. It's, 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 it's just the frame shift in my mind on what addiction is, essentially. Yes. It would, it would be like, you, yes. you can be addicted to things which appear to be good and justify your life on the surface, yes. which is yes. itself the addiction speak, or a complex more likely underneath that particular yes. addiction speaking yes. through you. So, so and, and you know, I could get very INTP about the thing and be like, so what is the specific quantifiable balance between, mm. you know, creativity and then resting from creativity and, and structure? Mm. It's when it becomes pathological, I guess, is... is, mm. is yes, that, it is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you'll know what that is. Can I just yeah. suggest that, um, or interject, I beg your pardon. Yeah. With respect to the, the reported uh, mm. example uh, from Jordan Peterson, I haven't witnessed it, I don't, so I don't know if it's true and I don't know the full context, but just taking what was said then, you're getting the imposition of his way of living That's onto true. someone else. Yes. Yes. And, uh, f and again, this is controversial. And I'll make an extreme example and work back from that about mm. how you could interpret that. Uh, Jung did counsel so to speak when counsel still meant to give advice it doesn't mm. these days for therapists but mm. never mind yeah. uh, that people should avoid trying to cure the world of their own disease and if uh, Jordan Peterson has an issue over order and structure he should not impose that as a doctrine or a dogma onto other people he doesn't know you know um, and doesn't know about their full background circumstances yes. and context and how that might affect somebody um, some creators, as I think Pauline's saying, will need structure and some just won't. Mm. And creativity is a thing that emerges through a person, an individual who has their own personal equation. In other words, that which adds up to them being them. And if you distort that by the imposition of an external structure, you are going to distort the creativity. Mm. And if you, you, you get someone who has uh, a healing neurosis, and some neuroses are attempts at self-cure and yes. healing coming through, and then you impose a structure onto that, so you distort it, you can kill it. I, I had this, this argument in um, an occupational therapy journal mm -hmm. in the late 1980s, uh, of all places, um, mm -hmm. where somebody had written, what would have happened to Sigmund Freud if he'd have been sectioned during his creative phase and then given occupational therapy? Okay. And I said, you would have cured him of his creative illness 
In other words, you would have destroyed it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, because occupational therapy is uh, supposedly a very flexible form of helping people to adjust in a psychiatric setting at any rate, yeah. uh, out from whatever's been hurting and harming them. But the idea of giving Sigmund Freud occupational therapy to distract him um, would have destroyed his creativity. Yes. So there's the imposition of a structure which is socially mm. sanctioned i.e. occupational therapy within a psychiatric setting that could have absolutely wrecked it for him. Yeah. Whether we agree with Freud or not, he was very creative. Mm. And his creativity was something off which Carl Jung bounced his creativity, and as did other people as well. So it's proliferated uh, Freud's creativity in seceding other people's as well. This well-meaning occupational therapist would have destroyed that. Mm. Yes. In, in is creativity in this sense meant to be a general sense of um, bringing out your own life force? It sounds kind of like, you know a, a woo woo thing. What, what, like whatever it. wishes to emerge from you, you allow it to emerge. Well, it, essentially, it's about fulfilling your potential. Yeah. Whatever that happens to be, and as I think I said earlier, no matter how great or how modest, and you can't set your stall out alongside somebody else because whatever that potential is is unique to you um i mean for example in my own life with my, my drawing and my painting if i look back to some of my my very early work it really was quite crude compared to what i might be able to achieve now um and if i look at some other artists who are out there um creating i might say well oh my work simply isn't as good as their work so I'm going to give up on it. I'm not going to persevere. I'm not going to continue to give energy to it, to try and, and fashion it and, and improve it. And again, that, that's the message with the red shoes. They're crude at first, but with perseverance and with dedication and practice, you know, you, you hone your skill, whether it's making a pair of shoes or it's drawing or painting or writing, whatever it happens to be. So I think the message is, Again, not not to try and be like anybody else at all, including Young. You can be inspired by his ideas, but if you become contained by them intellectually, then you become addicted to Young, essentially. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, and, so, you're no so, long, and you're no longer on your own path. Yeah. So, so addiction comes from not being yourself to your yes. full potential. Absolutely. And, and full potential doesn't necessarily equate to greatness. Mm. It, it's, it's to do with whatever hand you've been dealt, essentially. Yeah. And finding out what that means for you. Yeah. I like, I like that as a, as a, as a cure, you know, a, a cure-all di diagnosis. Someone presents with addiction in whatever form and it's like something has been frustrated within you and you haven't allowed it to come out. Yeah. Immediately what that does is it takes away the idea of, which is why at, at the beginning I brought up the idea of it being purely a chemical thing. And I mean purely a chemical thing coming at it from, from a colloquial standpoint, which sure. is a, a drug is addictive, therefore you are addicted to it. And it's like, well, there's yes. a reason why you're addicted to it in the first place. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying that's not important and that that, that shouldn't be addressed. And, and obviously it has to be addressed in the culture. If, if somebody needs to um, go into a clinic and detox or, or whatever, of course, that's a, that's a, a very important and, and integral part of, 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 of what might have to happen to them in order them, for them to get to a place where they can literally stand on their own two feet and, and do the, the deeper work that's required. Yeah, it's um, it kind of breaks my heart in a way, and kind of not. Um, yeah. There are about I think three people who are part of my inner circle group on the on the Patreon, the Arthur's Court yeah. tier, uh, since yeah. joining up, and it's not been for very long because we launched this what two months ago ish. Yeah. Uh, since joining up, they've they've completely quit their their pornography addiction. It's called colloquially PMO on the internet, which is a complete nonsense phrase: porn, masturbation, yeah. orgasm. And it's the, yeah. the, the 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 nofap stuff seems to have built up a mythology around it, as all movements tend to do, yeah. which, which 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 can help, and it could not help at the same time. But the fundamental idea that these guys came to me and were like, "Well, I've, I'm addicted to to porn." I'm, and mm. I, I, I can't stop or whatever else. And the idea I, I simply gave them was, what do you want to do? Not, not, not in a go be a traveling artist hippie sense. It's like, what do you actually yes. want to do? And then immediately what, what comes out is like, well, actually, I'm stuck in this job that I don't really like. 
which yes. was also one, one of my things a few months ago with the P, with the PhD. I'm starting doing something I don't re- really like. My relationship's not particularly mm. brilliant. You know, mm. my a lot of things. Some parents tend to come out a lot of the time, and it's like, well, that's why you're addicted to porn. And the, the way the way I tend to phrase it, you've got so much energy that's built up within you that's just not being released. And yes. It's like, and that was yes. enough to to cure it. Seeming addiction to something, and the way it's, it's, it's there's a huge weird cultural battle in particular with porn between the the standard psychology, you know convention which is like mm. there's not an addictive trait about porn whatsoever in fact what it is is it's actually a good thing it's your innate uh, your innate sexual fetishes allowing themselves to manifest on a particular mm. porn niche and immediately mm. my my bullshit senses go off and go go away that's complete and utter yes. nonsense uh, but yeah. then on, on the on the other side you've got this idea that porn is some kind of serious drug and it's, mm. and it's going to hook you in as soon as you see it it's like no mm. both of those aren't true you've, you you're just yes. there's a lot of energy you're not releasing in the right place and it's yes. weird because it's actually worked this is what this is why i'm saying it's because it actually worked yes. for, th- for three individuals who's presuming they're not lying and i have no reason to think that they're lying they're like That's literally true. realizing that simple idea got me to stop yes. sitting there masturbating and actually going and living well, at, at that point you know it's empirically true yes. it's no longer just an a, a, an idea or something to intellectualize absolutely Yes. It, it, it's true in life because you experience it in that way it, it's as Jung himself would say it's simply so yeah yeah it's um it, it's worked for me in terms of my um it, well, it wasn't alcoholism but it was drinking every day excessively mm-hmm. but it wasn't alcoholism in in, in the standard sense where you, you know because there's there's a, i've spoken to people who've been in aa before and there's mm-hmm. this whole idea of the whole quitting the aa process which has worked for lots of people i've known actually yes. it's, it's a whole system and a lot of it involves religion and everything else so i wouldn't have really fit into a group like that but mm-hmm. that would that that disappeared as soon as i basically mm-hmm. quit quit my phd and realized a couple other problems that were going on because i wasn't alive mm-hmm. so drink was making me feel alive yeah. Some symbolic there it's like yes. it, yeah, it's it, it's weird. It's incredibly weird, but it does work. Yeah, it really does I, work. Just say something about if you don't mind the way in which you you actually edit these podcasts that we make because I think it's it's relevant here because it's part of your creativity. Mm. And um, you you made a comment the other day where you said um, I'd like to make it beautiful, and I just mm. thought that was a, a, an interesting choice of words because it suggests a, a kind of a dedication to the craft, wanting to make something into the best that it, it can be. Yes, and um, that's again that's part of the handmade life. Yeah, well, well editing these things is uh, effortless. I'll say there's a I quite enjoy it, but it's effortless. But I want I want the thing to be almost like a film, and which is I quite want to be that in the future. Eventually, obviously, we're we're limited by the fact that you don't live down the street. You know, about an, an, an hour yeah. away or so. Limited by internet, limited by webcam, limited by budget, yeah. and and all of these other things. But yeah, yeah I, I want these things to be but sort of like. But that's, but that's a very uh, um, a TI way of looking at it, isn't it? Really. Yes. Yes. So so and, and I'm like, yeah. well, okay, these things are going to exist forever, regardless, because they are on the yes. internet. So I, I would like them to be as tight and as beautiful and as useful yes. as they possibly can. Yeah. Yes. But the, yeah. the the key is for me is in the language that you use, the fact that you want to make something beautiful, you want to have um, yeah. a product that you're satisfied with. Yes. Uh, again, don't don't forget it. You know, at the, at the bottom of addiction is um, there is a problem with being satiated. Mm. If you can do something or craft something or make something and <clears throat> feel satisfied with it, mm. then you've been satiated yeah. by that process. If something doesn't satisfy you, then the the desire for gratification builds and builds and builds, and it builds in the direction of addiction. But if you can do something by your own hand, you can make something, craft something, it doesn't matter what it is. Like I say, it could be a podcast, it can be a, a yeah. piece of writing, it, it can be a music score. It doesn't matter what that thing is. If you've crafted it yourself and you're satisfied with the outcome. And, and by that, I don't mean it being perfect because things never are. It's like with a drawing, when do you know to stop? When do you know it's completed? Well, you kind of just know that if you if you carry on beyond a particular point, you might ruin it, you might spoil it. So yeah. you have to be satisfied that you've completed something. Right, guys, yes, of course a... you can look. Um, 
if, if you want to know the man, there's two ways. We, you know this expression. Uh, firstly, <laughs> it's the personal myth mm -hmm. that puts everything into context. The second one, though, is that I'll say the man just for descriptive purposes. It could be anybody, male or female. Was the libido, and by libido I don't yes. mean the sexuality, yes. because sexuality is an expression of libido. Mm. Libido is just life energy. Mm. Where, where does it go? Yeah. And if you listen long enough to someone openly, they will tell you exactly where their libido is and where it's going, and that will reveal their instincts, and it will reveal the teleological or goal-directed aspect of their behavior which you can sum up as being mm. creative mm. and that then would describe the handmade life, life. yes yeah. um and you're coming out with things which i'm sure when you play this back and whenever yes. people watch it will reveal everything that anyone would really need to know about where you're at now mm. and where you're going mm. or where you intend to go mm. uh, and where the healthy part of your personality will be and mm. where that energy should go um it's just the way it is yes it, it, it's uh yeah. Just give someone an opportunity and, and they will tell you. And, and going back to what we said earlier about um, internet profits, th these people tell you exactly where their energy is. They tell you where their libido is. They tell you where their complexes are. They tell you where their frustrations are. Um, and if, if you can observe that at a suitable enough distance, you can avoid being woven into the fabric of their handmade life, yes. which may be very, very toxic for you. Mm. No, it's all part of this uncovering process. Mm. The kind of thing I'm, I'm hearing from you, I would actually regard as being very healthy. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's different. Mm. That's very different mm. from someone who is peddling depression, destruction, yes. darkness, staring yes. into the abyss, oh, yes. throwing yourself over like a lemming, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. Now, that, that is very, very destructive. But yeah. when someone tells you that they want to be creative mm. and are actually telling you what that medium of expression ideally would be for them at that point you can start to ignore all the alibis they throw up and say that this is too expensive or i'm not in the right place to do yes. this because the energy is pushing them in that direction and given a sufficient chance and <clears throat> chances emerge over time they will be able to fulfill that teleological drive mm. to creativity mm. creativity is positive libido yes it is sexuality is just an expression of that and so if your, your positive life is working itself through you, then your libido in the form of your sexuality will also be productive and positive. But when you abstract that, when you abstract sexuality as defining libido and you don't then match that properly with your instincts to become complete and com become whole, mm. it becomes pathological in yes, its expression. It does. At that point it becomes a neurotic alibi, which is defined by the idea that it's an addiction. The masturbation, for example, fap is an addiction. Porn is an addiction. It's not. It's just a misexpressed instinct that if you express it properly, that so-called addiction will go away. And that's the qualitative difference between that kind of an addiction and a substance which you ingest, which alters you biochemically. Yeah. That's different. Yeah. You can say it's an addiction and we all have addictive personalities, but they are completely different things. And it's important to know that. And for people who feel they're in the trap of no fap, you know, it's all about instinct and about actualizing yourself. It's spur capacity mm. for energy, mm. which is ducting off in that way. Yes. And then you get trapped in it by thinking there's something wrong with having sexual energy and, with, uh, and wanting to assert yourself positively as a man. If that's pathologized, mm. it's going to turn up in that way. Uh, but if you can get down to creativity and get that onto some other way of you being actualized as a man, you have the handmade life then you do. as a man. That's right. And yeah. That will go away. And, and your expression of sexuality will be productive. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yeah. I, I love that definition. Creativity is positive libido. Because I, I think it, it was a good idea to clear that up because creativity is obviously usually colloquially associated with... Uh, singing and dancing and and doing traditional art, it but, can but, be, but yes. it, it, of course it can be. But if it's uh, if it can be any kind of positive libido, then the more yeah. our, our audience do tend to be more um, uh, intuitive thinking types. Yes. So so in other words, they're like, but I really like ideas. Is that creative? And it's like, yes, it is. Yes. It's an expression yes, of, of your own pop yes. of your own pop yes. positive yes, libido. Yes, yes. If your instincts, sorry, love, I no, 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 if if your instincts are being satisfied, mm. then there's nothing wrong at all with thinking too much. And I've just said too much, which kind of suggests that it's wrong. But overthinking will find its proper expression if your wider instincts are satisfied. Yes. If they're not, 
and then you think too much the thinking then turns against you mm -hmm. And that can, that can lead to guilt complexes. It can lead to the over-manufacturing of, of uh, damaging self-talk and fantasies and then attachments to other people who are themselves perhaps screwed up and damaged, either through the internet or through books or whatever. Mm. And then you further destroy yourself. But because you think so well, yes. you, you're very rational then about destroying yourself. And this is where you get things like OCD from. This mm. is why CBT is such a crap form of therapy because anyone mm. who can outthink the CBT therapist, it's, it, 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 and there's it's a lot of people. Be, it's going to be yeah. sport for and them. Isn't there's it? a lot of people out there who can do that. Oh yes, easily. You know? yeah. Or people who just offer an irrational alternative to the hyper rationalism of CBT. It's not going to work. No. You know? So get get it, get into your feelings, get into your creativity, and mm. then. Your adapted side will not appear so one-sided or, or mm. misfired. That's a general truism mm. across the board for pretty much everyone. Yeah, I'd quite like to link the personal myth into this. Of course, we'll be coming out very, very soon with yes. Uh, yes. the actual personal myth guide, which I'm very, very excited for, and it's a um, series of accompanying videos, which will be very, very good. But to bring this might work because of my addictions at the end of 2019 or so, or, or throughout 2019, how they actually shifted and how I found myself. Because in that, the, in the video where I announced Young to Live By, I said, um, uh, I'm, I'm not a content creator, I'm a depth psychologist. And I said that deliberately. I got yeah. a, little, a little bit of flack from that. I said, like, oh, you're a depth psychologist now. I was like, yes. Yes. That's yes. Your calling. Well, you, well yes. you are what you do. You are what you do. And it's, and it's your calling. Yes. It's, it's day, literally, mm. in, in that fundamental sense. Mm. There's a saying, many are, are called, but few are chosen. Yeah. Are you familiar with that? Yes, yes. Well, actually, that's wrong. It's the other way around. Many are chosen, but few of those who are chosen are truly called. Yes, yes. Th those, who, those who are truly called are the ones who should be doing this. Mm. You know, anyone can be chosen. Anybody can go on a professional training course and go well, for all the... Well, they've self-selected. They, they self-select, yeah, mm. but, but yeah. that's does not define a calling no it doesn't not at all uh, and we found this in the decades that we've trained other therapists plenty of people were chosen to go on those courses mm. but very very few of them were truly called and those who were stand out and the qualities that make them stand out were present at the beginning of the process mm. it was not trained into them yeah the training was the acquisition of, of skills and some theory but the fundamentals of their nature that made them what they would become i.e really good therapists mm. were their anyway at the beginning yeah. and would have been whether they became therapists or not because yes. they are human qualities that are yeah. present yeah that, that's a good way of framing the actual personal myth part of, of how i come to realize why yes. i believe myself to be a depth psychologist and why i do believe mm -hmm. it to be my calling is like i you know mm -hmm. i had this ego fiction which comes from a variety of different places that i needed to be a scientist as in i needed to sit in a lab and do research and get top tier nature papers mm -hmm. which i would enjoy to do but mm -hmm. it was it was never quite um you wouldn't get me out of bed in the morning. You know, it's kind of like, a, eh, I'll stall for a bit. I'll do this. And yeah. then when I'm in the lab, I'd be like, oh, yeah, it's kind of nice. And I'd go through the motions. But through the personal myth exercise, which we will release potentially next week, maybe the week after, mm -hmm. um, I came to realize that every single one of my social interactions, more or less, became a form of therapy. Before mm -hmm. I really knew what therapy was, it was like a yeah. friend would come to me and be like, this happened. Why do you think this, James? And I, we, they would turn into like these three, four, five hour conversations about how to make each other better and how to make each other happier every single time. Even when like, like drinking in other people's house parties, it would be people would come up to me and I'd always turn it and people would always, they, they'd, they'd go and they'd turn it back to me and be like, why can't you just chill for a minute? And I could chill for a minute, but someone would, mm -hmm. would, would come up to me and be like, you know, they weren't happy. It'd be like, what's up? They're like, well, my, my, my boyfriend yelled at me or something today. And it would become mm -hmm. some weird form of therapy. So the way my, my libido naturally seems to express itself is helping mm -hmm. people fundamentally. Mm -hmm. And, it's, and I didn't know that because I had all these weird ego fictions around when well, I have to be the best scientist ever and I have yeah. to be, as I've been very open about, I have to be a Jordan Peterson character or I have to be a Gary Vee character or, or Jocko mm -hmm. Willink. They justify my life. And it's mm -hmm. like, no, they don't. No, they don't. Whatever mm -hmm. the genomic self is, it wants to express itself. Yeah. And it seems to be mm -hmm. something which we, you know, well, you, colloquially you, dub depth yeah. psychologist. Well, you've clearly taken your science with you. You've not left it behind. It, yeah, it's, think, it's definitely formed a, a part of it, yeah. You'd be able to talk about the genomic self if, you, if you'd left it behind. So all you've really done it is to incorporate it. Yes, with, within the, the within the wider you know. theme of yeah. has to yeah. be useful to help people. And that's what yeah. I wasn't getting with the actual research, was it's like, here's a random piece of yeast, figure out what it does. Mm -hmm. I was like, ah. If it was figure out what this random piece of yeast does because it could actually make somebody smile, then I'd be like, yeah. I'm all in. 
that was yes. the part that I was missing. So it's bringing yes. the biology and the overall what seems that the part of the myth is together. Yeah. So, but at that point yeah. you give it meaning you, you give meaning to why you're doing what you're doing as well even if it is just you that we're talking about yeah and, and and in the process of doing that in the context of this particular video uh the addiction disappeared or the addictions disappeared yes so yeah. just, they just will. Com you're completely, gone. completely gone completely yes gone. yes and your actualizing instincts mm. you know like, like you said you're actualizing that process the genomic self which which is releasing your lifespan developments yes things just disappear they get they out of the way because you're intended to be adapted mm. you are intended to be happy if you're not happy you're not properly adapted you're not optimizing your genome as, yes. uh, uh, as well as you can through its expression if, if we want to use a biological level of, <clears throat> of uh, explanation and yeah uh, being a therapist there's lots of ways of being a therapist and some of them don't result from a calling. They just result from social interaction. What passes for counseling, for example, is superficial. It doesn't go in depth yeah. to go in depth. You do need a calling because it's not a nice place to go. Yeah. It's not nice at all. Mm. Uh, and a, a lot of so-called psychological therapists, particularly those who identify as counselors from whatever school of therapy don't want to know about the dark side. They deny that it exists. Mm. They deny biology. Uh, fine okay if it's just someone who is the well worried and uh, just needs a friendly conversation that they could get in a shop mm. or on a bus yes. then that's fine well they fine. can get it on a shop exactly uh, in a shop and, or on and, a bus and, that, and that's yeah. fine but if you're if you're talking about what young meant when he wrote his paper psychotherapists or the clergy right the implication being that this is a spiritual and yeah. transformative process then it has to be a calling mm -hmm. and the calling to be a depth psychologist has to be on an equivalent level that you would expect from a genuinely religious individual who had a calling to their faith yes it has to be on that level and it changes everything yes yes definitely and i guess with uh, with that we should probably close up today's show a very very um impassioned show but you know i guess I guess these things become really really important yeah. so thank you steve thank you pauline thank you uh, thank James. you and, and th thank you to every, everybody thank watching everybody thank you watching as well hope to see you all soon thank you yes uh i'm gonna give a quick reminder if you'd like to either come into the aforementioned signal group which i mentioned earlier or if you come to uh, want to join the discord where steve is in there constantly writing replying to people putting out these <laughs> these gems I've, I've described it before as these hidden resources on jungian psychology because they are hidden resources on jungian psychology these little gems you don't get them anywhere else i've tried i've tried to find them they don't so so steve has them and he puts them in the discord life. It's a, a, at least what, what what we have to offer is a handmade life in that sense but also in the sense that other people should make their own. We're not suggesting that people follow us. Not at all. We just perhaps have some experience. That, that would could, be a disaster. It would be a disaster, <laughs> yeah, because you'd, you'd, you'd encounter every mistake that we've made, yes. and we've made a lot. But the, the importance is to, is to be as authentic as possible, and that is why Franz Jung, Carl Jung's only son, supported us from outside of the Jungian orthodoxy. He did that for a reason. Mm. Yeah? Uh, yeah. And that's because... As far as was possible, we were living authentically and genuinely, and we had proper intentions to move forward with his father's ideas for a wider audience. Mm -hmm. And he knew, he knew full well that, that we were bringing in other things into that. And he was happy with that. He was content with it. And that's a handmade life. And please, please, everyone, do it for yourselves. Yeah, yeah. And I guess if you'd like to become a part or, or, or some, some level of that promise, to become involved in that process, yeah. then um, perhaps pop in the Discord and say hello. And of course, there are other things over on the Patreon as well. And if you would like a free copy of potentially, potentially the most advanced guide on integrating the shadow ever, completely free, link in the description down below. And, um, and with that, thank you, everybody. Thank you both. See you again real soon. Keep making things beautiful, James. Yeah. <laughs> thank you.